Support for Short Stops is presented by the Kalem Trading Institute. Check out our website at www.kaleminstitute.com. On today's episode, it was SMPH, so the stock was moving pretty well, and uh, I had a position. I was, I was like 30% in. And then I went to Lawrence, uh, and uh, I asked him about it, and he said that he likes it. So I'm like, whoa, he likes it. All right, so I'm going to put in more. So I put in 50%. And after 30 minutes, I put in 100%. <laughs> and then, uh, at the end of the day, we need to happen. <laughs> at the end of the day, I was 150% in. Call it what you want a game, an experiment, a gamble. But stock trading in the global financial markets to us is a business. Every day, you're surrounded by the noise buy, sell, hold, buy more. And we're going to quiet it down and filter out the best trading strategies, tips, and stock picks. You want information on how to find your next bagger or home run? You'll find it right here on Short Stops. Hi guys, welcome to episode 2 of Short Stops. Today, we'll be talking about Now Corporation and the possibility of being the third largest telco operator in the Philippines. And later on in this segment, we'll be talking about how 90% of stock traders lose money in the stock market and what tips we could give for you guys. So with me here today, is two Kalem coaches and senior global equity traders, Mr. Jensen C. Hello, listeners. And Mr. Leonard Chua. Hi, everyone. So we've seen today one of the biggest moves we've had in a long time. Now Corporation is up over 30%, I believe, and with a total market volume of over 750 million pesos. What's your thoughts on this, guys? Well, first of all, I think this is a lot of speculation happening. People are trying to find out where this will be part of the third telco that's coming to the Philippines. And I even have lots of friends talking about it. Uh, but mostly, when we deal with these stocks, we treat it more like momentum trading. So we look for quiet pauses before getting in and put our stop losses very tight also. So would you still be looking at it? Of course, of course. So I want it to quiet down, not today when it's too volatile. Hopefully it quiets down the next few days and seek to enter when the mark, when it breaks out again. Gents? In Kilo, we have this method of trading called momentum trading. So it particularly deals with these kind of speculations. The rumor, stock tips kind of speculation. So I'll be looking to enter for sure. But volume of over 1 billion over the past two trading days, don't you think this is a little bit too much already? Well, in speculation, nothing is too much. That's, that's the beauty of it. I mean, eventually, if the third telco does come, then who knows what, what could happen to this company. So we just join the trade. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so moving on. 90% of the stock traders lose money in the stock market. And we've seen, we don't have full statistics for this, but it's always what we hear. And so on your experience, how accurate do you think this is? Well, for me, um, I think the reason is because they fail to treat it as a business. So what I mean by that is just, um, I think uh, when they enter a market, they're just focusing on making the money, all about the bottom lines. But when you're making a business, you have to know the intricacies behind it. So the connections, do you have good mentors? Um, are you joining a good community in which you can um, hone your craft, be with like-minded people? If you think about it, when people start off as traders, they don't really think about going to a community. How important is that for you? Well, I've been here for about eight years, and uh, I can say that uh, during the first few years, I, I thought that it was all about me. So uh, my bottom line, my performance would always be a factor of myself. But later on, you would see that when you, when you think about it like that, you would always be prone to personal blind spots. So your personal biases you would always fall into a loop of mistakes. So you need someone or other people who has a different perspective on things. And um, I think the beauty about joining a community is that it forces you to be open-minded. You are exposed to other ways of thinking. And um, in the long run, it'll, it'll, be, it'll prove beneficial. Okay, great. Leonard, what about you? Okay, for me, the reason that a lot of the traders fail is one, they don't have an identity. So sometimes you, you get confused whether are you going for growth or value? Are you scalping or are you position trading? And they try different things without being very good in one style. Uh, another possible reason is they don't review their trades. 
So we, st we stress when we, in our daily work to review our trades every day because that's the only way you, you can find out whether you're strong on certain setups or weak on certain formations also. And lastly, I guess in line with what Jensen said, the community is very important. It's not just the simple stock tips or sharing of your best roadshow trades, but it's really more on trying to find out whether you can build systems together and reviewing your processes, whether you were being a bias, yeah, as Jensen said, or being uh, objective on your trades. Going back to your first point, you talked about something really significant and you talked about identity. And not knowing who you are, how related is this to over trading? I think it's very, very related to it. Personally, that's my problem because uh, <laughs> when, when I started, I started as a research eight years ago. And when you're in research, you, you tend to find stocks that are cheap because it goes into your radar. And so that becomes a problem when you are trading and you want things to move immediately. And so you will over trade certain stocks when they're not yet ready. Okay, so what's the worst trade you've ever experienced in your life? Okay, so uh, there's been just so much that... Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but I'll tell you one story that uh, I think that's, that is most apt in this topic. So um, it was SMPH. I think that was back in 2014. Okay, so the, so the stock was moving pretty well and uh, I have a position. I was, I was like 30% in. And then I went to Lawrence uh, and uh, I asked him about it and he said that he likes it. So I'm like, whoa, he likes it. All right, so I'm gonna put in more. So I put in 50%. And after 30 minutes, I put in 100%. <laughs> and then- uh, It's at a the black end of the swan day, waiting to happen. <laughs> at the end of the day, I was 150% in. Okay, so the next day it didn't move and I was, and I, I remember that night I can't sleep. The next day, uh, like it went down 1% and then I saw the damage, I was like, what? And so um, I think the stock ended like down 2% the next day and uh, the damage was just too big. And uh, I remember just to, uh, you know, respect, respect risk. I think I lost around uh, 100,000, but this, this was um, early in my career. So that was, a, so that, <laughs> that amount for me was uh, pretty huge. Okay, for me, I have a quite similar story. It happened in 2011. And at that time, I really wanted RLC for some reason. And there, I, I tried to go all in with margin. And then the next day, what happened was the credit rating down in the US and everything collapsed in five days. The market was down like 15% and I had to cut it when it was down 8%. And so my portfolio was, I think similar to Jensen, 100,000 lost in a week. And it was a lot already for that time and had to review really what was happening with my trading then. You know, I have a similar story. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny part about all of this is that where we lost money is all in pretty large corporations, not in your small corporations, not in your penny stocks. In fact, in 2010, I still remember this very clearly. I put in all of my account and I think I've, I share this to a lot of people. It's more than 5 million pesos at that time. And I margined all the way to 200%. And I was betting on Champion. Andrew Tan on AGI. <laughs> and this stock went from 4 to 13 pesos. Yeah. But I wasn't there. I put all my money there on 1250, I believe, as it was consolidating for seven months. Because I thought it was in duration. And it was poised to go up another level after the IPOs with uh, Travelers and uh, Emperor Unfortunately, before both of, unfortunately before AGI went up, it went down fifteen percent because of the place out, and I lost more than twenty percent of my portfolio in two days' time, and I remember that clearly, and that's one of the most painful stories at that time for me, especially I was starting out. But at least at the end of the rainbow, it it, it gives you more insight, and you learn from these stuff as well. Once in a lifetime. <laughs> so at the end of the day, what do you think would separate the great traders from amateurs? Well, for me, um, it'll always boil down to discipline. I think most traders are just too focused on the profits. But um, if you read books, all of them would always say that you have to know how much are you betting on every single time. So how much are you risking? So are you risking 5% of your portfolio at any given time, 10%? Then for me, that's too much, right? So great traders know the 
the power of consistency more than the power of intensity. So I think as young traders, all they want is some great story to tell to other traders. Like, uh, hey, look at me, I got this stock. I'm in 50% and it's up 20%. But in reality, that rarely happens. Right. Awesome. So discipline, consistency, and knowing your risk at the end of the day. Yes. Leonard. Uh, there's a lot of things, but I would say it's following your plan. Uh, because most of the time we get distracted by tips. So suddenly you have stocks that are moving and you want to participate immediately without a plan. And that's where I see the great traders are able to separate themselves, form a plan first, and then strike when the timing is there. So you talk about plans and in relation to Jensen and you talked about discipline, trading and consistency. How do you guys plan all of this and all this mental preparation? Like, is it the night before you guys already prepare for the next day? Or do you have habits in the morning that you do before market even begins? For me, it starts even before the market begins. So uh, I'm focused heavily on the US. So by lunchtime, you should already have a hit list. We look at all the charts that are available and you should have processed it properly. And by the afternoon, we're already talking within our group what stocks to trade for the night. I'm a creature of habit, so I have many morning rituals, evening rituals. So um, I'm not gonna go <laughs> through all that, it might bore you. But um, one thing that I've learned uh, in trading is that you have to be prepared, like even before the market starts, because when the market starts, it's gonna be chaos, right? So I believe in the 80-20 rule. So my preparation is like 80% of what I'm gonna do for the day is already prepared. And I have 20% for like um, improv improvision. I guess that's a word, uh, improvise. So I guess 80-20 um, rule, that's a good ratio for me. So I always plan my trades, my sizing before, before the market I, opens. Right. And uh, when things start to go, um, you know, not my way. So that's when the 20% comes in. The Pareto principle, yeah. I think it's something you can apply in every aspect of life anyway. So thank you guys for that. And I guess a lot of people are wanting to ask, what stocks are you looking at now? The irony now. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, right now I'm actually looking at Mac. Well, there was a rumor, I, I guess there's a news right now that, uh, that Naia uh, canceled the MIAS core contract. So I guess that what, that's what prompted um, the stock to move. But if you look closely at the technicals, you can see that um, there has been foreign buying in the past three days. And that's a sign clearly that, uh, that the prices hold at the 50 day. So, um, so that, that for me was a good reason for me to buy it. So I actually sold half right now and I'm just waiting for it to quiet down, see if I can add more. So you sold half already? Yes, because it's like 9% up, 8% up. <laughs> Would you still buy it back if yeah, opportunity definitely. comes? Definitely, definitely. Leonard? For me right now, uh, I would have Wilcon. This was a very hot IPO last year and it consolidated quite a long time because it went up a lot. So right now it broke out around 8 40, 850, we're trying to hold as much as we can because I think this is a solid company and institutions should come in and pick this company up. Okay. Just one last thing for our listeners before we end. What's the best advice you could give for people starting out today? For me, it's to jump in and do not give up. One of the, my favorite stories is Mark Vinervini, where he shared that for the first six years of his trading life, he struggled. But then after that, the seventh year made more than enough for all those first six years of struggle. Yeah, so don't give up. Keep finding the correct community so that you can learn as much as you can. Very nice, very nice. Uh, well, for me, um, I think uh, now that I'm more mature, uh, <laughs> I think that the uh, the best advice that I can give to young traders is that you have to change your relationship with failure. Okay, so I remember when I, whenever we have, a, whenever I have a failure, I always get uh, disappointed, angry, frustrated. But you have to know that failure is not the opposite of success. Failure is a part of success. And uh, I think since we're in the trading business in a uh, stock market, you have to enjoy it. Don't rush the experience. Uh, I think learn, learn. Don't, uh, don't be. Um, eager to add to put in more size uh, be comfortable first with the with the amount that you can lose before you put in size i think that's uh, that's it there you guys have it thank you guys for listening you heard it here first we have had great advice from jensen and leonard keep on trying don't be afraid of failing until next time bye bye, bye guys